Hello, in this video we're going to discuss crossed aldol reactions. So here, uh, what happens if we try to combine two different aldehydes? So let's start, we'll use acid aldehyde, which we saw last time. And let's try to combine that with propionaldehyde. <laughs> okay, so our first aldehyde has two carbons, our second aldehyde has three carbons. Now, what I'll assume here is that we're uh, going to have multiple molecules of each in solution. It's hard to just isolate you know, one molecule of an aldehyde or one molecule of anything really. So what could potentially happen is that two of the acid aldehyde molecules could react together. So that would give us the following beta hydroxy aldehyde that we saw last time. Another possibility is that two of the propionaldehyde molecules react together. So that would give us a different molecule Another possibility is that the acid aldehyde does react with the propionaldehyde. However, would it be part of the uh, aldehyde or would it become the alcohol on our product? So in one case, it could remain as the aldehyde while the propionaldehyde becomes the alcohol. And again, I'll highlight our new bonds that form. The other possibility is that propionaldehyde stays as the aldehyde, so it becomes the enolate, and acid aldehyde becomes the alcohol. So we have the potential to form four products. That's way too many. Okay, so how could we limit the products that we form? So let's talk about how to avoid multiple products for this type of reaction. Now, the first one is obvious. Uh, just avoid the problem. Don't mix different aldehydes. So maybe you could find a different synthesis pathway to make your product. Um, another option is to drip the aldehyde or ketone into um, a really strong base, and then that's going to create 100% of your enolate. Then you could transfer that solution to your second aldehyde or ketone um, and kind of control the reaction that way. So let's write that down. So we're going to drip the initial ketone or aldehyde into a really strong base. And one strong base that we have talked about recently is LDA, lithium diisopropyl amide. So you could use that in your, as your really strong base. Um, and let's just draw that off to the side so we remember what it looks like here. So 
So we got two isopropyl groups on that nitrogen there. So this would form, again, 100% enolate product or intermediate, which we could then transfer to uh, the second aldehyde or ketone, depending on what you're reacting. Another option, you could use reagents where only one starting material has alpha protons. Because remember, in the very first step of aldol addition, we're going to remove an alpha proton to create an enolate. So if only one of your reagents has an alpha proton available, then that has to become the enolate, which will then help control your product and what forms. So use reagents where only one starting material has alpha protons. All right, so uh, let's do a practice problem. So in this practice problem, I'm going to give you the product And I want you to figure out which starting materials we're going to use to make this product. So feel free to pause the video, try to figure out your starting materials. Um, and then we'll go over it together. Okay, so one thing I'm noticing here, this is not a beta hydroxy aldehyde. This is actually a beta hydroxy ketone. We don't have an aldehyde on one side. We have a ketone there. So it is possible to perform this, re this aldol reaction with a ketone. Um, but we most often just use aldehydes because they're more reactive. But you can do it with a ketone. So my hint from the previous lecture, if you're starting from the product, was to find the alpha and beta carbons because that's where the new bond forms. So let's see, we're gonna start at our carbonyl carbon and move one carbon over. So that's our alpha carbon. And then we know the alcohol is on the beta carbon. So that is our new bond that needs to form in the reaction. And to figure out the starting materials, I'm just going to cut that in half. So let's use a retro synthetic arrow to go back. So it looks like that ketone had to be our source of a negative carbon or otherwise known as the enolate. And then the other half of our product was an aldehyde. Okay, now in order to form our product, we want to make sure that the ketone is the enolate, not the aldehyde, right? So we would want to misspelled that, we would want to add the ketone 
to a strong base like LDA first to ensure that it is the enolate. And then it would go on to attack the aldehyde as an enolate, and then we would get our desired product. Now, if we didn't do that, then maybe we would end up with a completely different product. Maybe the aldehyde would become the enolate and attack the ketone. Um, so again, we want to try to control the experiment as much as we can in these conditions when you have two different starting materials. Or, like I said, you could just avoid this problem altogether and find a different way to make your product. <laughs> okay, let's look at another practice problem. So again, I'm going to give you um, a product and you are going to try to figure out the starting materials. All right, so which starting materials do we need? And in this product, notice that we have a double bond instead of an alcohol there. So feel free to pause the video, figure out what our starting materials would need to be, and then we'll go over it together. Okay, so similar to the last problem, let's find our alpha and beta carbons. So we'll start at the carbonyl carbon and move over one. That's our alpha carbon. And then we also will move one more position and that is our beta carbon. So now I'm gonna cut this in half because that will kind of tell me, you know, where my molecules are. But first, if we move back one step, remember that to form that double bond in that particular position, that means that we initially had an alcohol at the beta position. And then we had our aldehyde. Okay. And in order to get from that alcohol to the double bond, we uh, would use heat and sodium hydroxide. So this still doesn't give us our starting materials. So let's go one more step back. And now this is where we're going to cut our molecule in half. Now, the alcohol, remember, was initially a carbonyl group. And it looks like there aren't any other alkyl groups there. So this was probably an aldehyde. And this was going to be attacked by the other half of our molecule, which was just a different type of aldehyde, propionaldehyde, also known as propanol. So the propanol must have been the enolate in order to attack the other aldehyde and create an alcohol group. But also notice that the other aldehyde, benzaldehyde, doesn't have any alpha protons. So let's find our alpha carbons. Well, if we start at the carbonyl carbon, uh, in one direction we have a hydrogen, but in the other direction we have our alpha carbon. And are there any protons on that alpha carbon? No. So remember, one of our strategies for aldol reactions 
is to use reagents where only one of the starting materials has alpha protons. So let's look at our other aldehyde. We'll start at the carbonyl carbon. Let's move over one. That's our alpha carbon. This one does have alpha protons. So that can become an enolate because a base could take one of those protons, leave a negative charge behind. But benzaldehyde, the other aldehyde, doesn't have any alpha protons. So it can't be an enolate and attack another aldehyde. So this this is another strategy we can use to get the product we want. Make sure one of the reagents does not have alpha protons. Okay, so I think that's it for aldol reactions. Next time we'll start talking about more reactions, um, one of which is called the Kleisen condensation reaction. So I will see you then.